Okay, so uh, we have seen in the last lecture the uh, the famous theorem of Montel on normality of families, and what it says is that you suppose you have a family of meromorphic functions defined on a domain. The domain can be in the extended complex plane. To decide that the family is normal, all you have to do is to ensure that all the functions in the family do not take three distinct values in the extended plane. Okay. And uh, you know because you are working with meromorphic functions, you have to allow the value infinity because that is the value that a meromorphic function at a pole will take. Okay. And, uh, but of course, if you are looking at a family of analytic functions, okay, then uh, the uh, condition is much more simpler. You have to just find two complex values which the uh, functions in the family uh, do not take and if, you, if that is true, then uh, the family is normal. Okay. This is the great theorem of Montel. And uh, um, uh, so, uh, you see, it is the key to uh, uh, proving the Picard theorems, which we will do. All right. So, um, so, so, so here is uh, uh, Picard's big or great theorem. So, you know what the theorem is? The theorem is that if you take a function which has an isolated essential singularity, then <coughs> the image of any neighborhood of that singularity uh, is uh, either the whole complex plane or it is the complex plane minus a single value. Okay? That means it means it means that it can at most omit one complex value. All right? And what is the restatement? <coughs> the restatement is that if it omits uh, more than one value, if it omits two values, uh, <coughs> Uh, that is something that cannot be that is not possible. Okay. <coughs> so, what we will do is um, we will assume that it omits two values and then use uh, uh, the uh, Montel criterion that uh, a resulting family of zoomed functions is normal okay, and examine the limit uh, of the zoomed functions and that will give you the proof. Okay. So, uh, so, let me state it let f of z let f uh, be uh, let f have an isolated, let f of z have an isolated at z is equal to z naught, uh, uh, then uh, the image under f of any deleted neighborhood of z naught is either all of the complex plane or omits at most one value in c. So, this is Picard's theorem. And of course, because this is valid for every neighborhood, it means that you know uh, it will take uh, uh, except for one value which it might omit. All other complex values it will take infinitely many times because you the same way uh, if you find a point where it will take that value, then you can find a smaller neighborhood. You can take a smaller neighborhood, deleted neighborhood of Z naught, and in that neighborhood also again it has to take that value, and you can go on like this. Therefore, it will take every value except one value infinitely many times. Okay, that's a uh, that's amazing behavior of a uh, 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 function, analytic function around a isolated uh, essential singularity. Okay, so uh, so he, this is the theorem, uh, and uh, so what is the proof? The proof is uh, proof is uh, uh, by contradiction by contradiction. Uh, uh, by contradiction using uh, the zooming process, the so you know the zooming process has been we have been using it right from Zalkman's lemma, okay. And uh, you know what the what is the main idea behind the zooming process? The idea behind the zooming process is, as you zoom into a normal point, then all the zoomed functions uh, will converge normally to a constant function, and uh, if you zoom to a non-normal point, then all the zoomed functions will converge to a non-constant meromorphic function. 
okay that is the basically the principle all right so uh, so what we'll do is so assume uh, uh, f omits uh, 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 two values uh, in uh, 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 f omits two values in c uh, uh, in some deleted neighborhood uh, 0 less than mod z minus z naught lesser than say rho ok. So, so you have to show that f uh, uh, takes either takes all values or it will take all values except 1. So, the if you want to contradict that you have to assume that f omits at least 2 values ok. Uh, so, so let us assume that all right. Uh, so, he, so you what you do is uh, so here is it so here is my diagram. Uh, so, I have uh, so, so this is the uh, this is the complex plane uh, this is z plane and uh, I have this point z naught and you know I there is this small disc uh, surrounding z naught uh, radius rho uh, uh, this disc with radius rho and uh, on this disc f does not uh, take two values two complex values. Uh, that means, there are two distinct complex values which f will never take it may not take many more values also, but at least two values it misses ok. And uh, what am I going to do I am going to construct a sequence of zoom functions. So, what is the sequence of zoom functions what you do is well uh, you, uh, take uh, take any uh, take any uh, so, before that let me write it uh, you know ideologically zoom into the function f at z naught itself ok. Mind you the function in, an, in the z naught is an isolated singular point it is an essential singular point therefore, in the deleted neighborhood of z naught in this deleted disc uh, this punctured disc ok centered at z naught radius rho you, you throw out the point z naught in the in the punctured disc it is the function is analytic mind you ok. And what I am going to do is I am actually going to zoom into z naught ok. I am going to just zoom into z naught and how do I zoom into z naught by taking smaller and smaller disks of smaller and smaller radii which are centered at z naught and of course, I have to exclude z naught because z naught is a pointer of singularity of f ok. So, so what you do is uh, zoom in to z naught ok and so let me say uh, uh, that is take a sequence uh, epsilon n tending to 0 uh, plus uh, 0 less than epsilon n lesser than uh, rho ok. So, you take a sequence of smaller and smaller radii ok uh, and let g n of zeta be the zooming of f the same function f centered at z naught <coughs> uh, uh, the scaling factor is 1 by epsilon n and the variable is zeta ok. So, this means that you are just taking f of z naught plus epsilon n times zeta this is the function ok. So, this is what my g n is. So, I am using that single function I am constructing a family of functions using the single function f I am constructing a family of functions g n ok. And where are these g n's defined? So, you see the uh, so this is a z plane and and then if you look at it correspondingly you have the uh, you have the uh, so this is the complex plane which is a z plane then I also have the complex plane which is zeta plane ok. And in the zeta plane what happens is that you know if I take uh, if I take this disc uh, centered at the origin uh, and radius uh, if I take the radius to be uh, rho by epsilon n ok. Uh, that is for mod zeta less than rho by epsilon n mod epsilon n zeta will be less than rho and therefore, this is the uh, uh, so this is the disc in which g n is defined, but the only thing is it is not defined at the origin because at the origin the origin corresponds to z naught and for and, and f at z naught is not defined because z naught is a singularity of f ok. So, uh, so, let, so, so let us write that down uh, g n is defined uh, so let me write this here g n of zeta is defined in uh, 0 less than uh, mod zeta 
less than epsilon, rho by epsilon n and of course you know uh, the point about this whole business is that since epsilon n tends to 0 plus rho by epsilon n tends to infinity and therefore uh, g and zeta is going to be the you can talk about uh, convergence or normal convergence of g and zeta on the whole punctured plane okay except that there is a whole plane except the origin because eventually any compact subset of the of the of the punctured plane other than which does not contain the origin is going to be cons is going to be contained in the domain of g n zeta for n sufficiently large okay. So, uh, so let me write this down note that um, uh, 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 any compact subset of uh, uh, c uh, not containing the origin Uh, the origin is going to be in the domain of definition of g n zeta for e n sufficiently large ok. So, uh, now, now I as now I wanted to just watch see after all uh, you know the, uh, uh, the 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 values of g n in this punctured disc centered at the origin radius rho by epsilon n correspond to exactly the values of f in the punctured disc centered at z naught uh, the values of f in, uh, inside this uh, this whole uh, uh, disc punctured disc centered at z naught radius rho they are exactly the values of g n in uh, the punctured disc centered at the origin uh, radius rho by epsilon n because this is just a scaling and a translation ok. Now you see uh, 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 now you know f but what is what have we assumed about f we have assumed that f omits two complex values ok f, o, f is an analytic function and it omits two at least two complex values in this the disc punctured disc centered at z naught radius rho therefore each of the g n's will also omit those two values in uh, in in their domains okay and of course each of the g n's are also uh, analytic functions because they differ from f only by uh, a bilinear transformation consisting of a scaling and a root and a translation okay so uh, but now you know we are in good shape because what you have done is we have we have we have been able to get a family of uh, we have been able to get a family of functions g n which are analytic ok and which omit two values. Now immediately Montel's uh, great theorem will tell you that they have it has to be normal and you will get a convergent subsequence and then you have to examine the limit ok and the limit will give you a contradiction alright. So uh, basically the contradiction will be that the limit function at the origin will uh, tell uh, is examining the limit function at the origin will tell you that the origin has to be either a pole or a removable singularity for f which is not true I mean analysis of the limit function will tell you that uh, the uh, you take this limit function this limit function will also be defined on the punctured plane ok because all the original g n's are all defined outside 0 ok. So, the if you analyze the limit function see the limit function is like zooming into f at z naught infinitely many times ok. So, the behavior of the limit function at the origin which is an isolated singularity will reflect upon the behavior of f at z naught and by analysis we will show that if you analyze the limit function there are only two possibilities z naught should either be a removable singularity or it has to be a pole and both of these are contradictions because I assume z naught for f to be a essential singularity ok and that that is how the proof goes. So, so it is it becomes as simple as that. So, let so let me write this down uh, note that uh, g n uh, is uh, is a uh, normal family as it also does not uh, assume the uh, values that f omits ok. So, so the, what does it mean if it is a normal family it, it means that you know uh, and it is it is a normal family 
uh, and mind you for g n because these are zoomed functions whose domains are becoming bigger and bigger and bigger okay uh, you you can think of them uh, as a as a normal family uh, <coughs> you know in uh, uh, with a uh, uh, with a limit in uh, the punctured plane all right so what you must understand is that if you take uh, uh, for example if you take the punctured unit disc okay if you take the punctured unit disc then uh, for n sufficiently large uh, they all the gns are going to be defined uh, their domains are going to become bigger and bigger and they are going to contain the punctured unit disc okay so you can say that the uh, uh, if you want to take the if you want to talk about the domain of the gns okay you can assume that for n beyond uh, for n sufficiently large the domain contains the unit disc if you want or for that matter any finite disc okay with the om with of course the origin omitted okay and when you take the limit function that is because gn is a normal is normal if you take the limit function the limit function will be defined on the whole punctured plane because it will make sense uh, because you are covering every point in the in the plane literally because for every point in the plane uh, if you take epsilon n sufficiently small rho by epsilon n becomes sufficiently large and gn's beyond a certain stage will be defined at that point and therefore the limit of all the if you take a convergent subsequence of gn's as the limit will also be defined at that point okay so so let me write this uh, um, thus uh, uh, gnk uh, 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 thus there exists gnk a subsequence uh, that converges normally uh, to g on uh, to g of zeta if you want on c minus the origin okay so this happens because what is the meaning of normal family normal means that uh, normally sequentially compact that means give me any sequence uh, there is a normally convergent subsequence so if i when when gn itself is a normal family it is already a sequence so it will have a normally convergent subsequence so you have a subsequence gnk which converges normally to g on c minus 0 okay but the point is that it's not it's not uh, what is important is that it is g lives in a uh, neighborhood of zero okay and uh, now now try to understand each gn is analytic on uh, on on the punctured disk on a punctured disk centered at the origin okay therefore this limit function g is a normal limit of analytic functions we have already seen such a normal limit can have only two possibilities either the either the normal limit can com completely be analytic or it can be identically infinity these are the only two possibilities so let the let us write that down uh, thus g is identically infinity or g is analytic uh, in uh, c minus 0 okay now let us look at both of these cases uh, suppose uh, 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 g is identically infinity okay suppose g is identically infinity so uh, so what does it mean what this will mean see think of it uh, uh, you know uh, heuristically g is f zoomed uh, you know infinitely at z not and if g is identically infinity what you are actually saying is that f is infinity in a neighborhood of f is going to infinity in a neighborhood of z not right because the values of g are just limits of values of gn's and the values of gn's are just values of f in smaller and smaller neighborhoods so if g is identically infinity okay that means that the uh, 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 the the gn's are getting larger and larger in modulus okay and that means that the values of f are getting closer and closer to infinity as you approach z0 but that means z0 is a pole but that's not possible because z0 is an essential singularity so this is not possible so you have ruled out this case okay so let me write this down this means that uh, g of zeta uh, is infinity uh, for all zeta uh, in c minus infinity i'll have to make use of the fact that you know 
uh, g n converges to g uh, normally ok. G is not just the it is not simply limit of g n. of course it is point wise limit of g n, but it is not it is more than that it is not just the point wise limit it is a normal limit. So, the, the convergence is uniform on compact subsets ok. So, you know uh, 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 g n of zeta converges to g of zeta uh, uh, uniformly uh, on mod zeta is equal to say r uh, for any r greater than 0. Because you see mod zeta equal to r is a circle in the zeta plane centered at the origin radius r and that is certainly a compact set it is closed and bound. And uh, g n g is a normal limit therefore, the convergence g n to g should be uniform on any compact subset. So, it has to be uniform on mod zeta equal to r ok. But, but of course, what is uh, uh, but what is g zeta? g zeta is infinity if g is identically infinity. So, what this and 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 what does uniform convergence mean? Mean it means that you know all the g n's they will come to within an epsilon of g zeta ok uh, if you take n sufficiently large irrespective of zeta right that is what it means ok. But of course, uh, you want to come to an epsilon uh, of infinity. So, you will have to be careful and you will have to use a spherical metric ok. So, so let me write this down uh, uh, thus uh, given uh, epsilon greater than 0 uh, the spherical distance between g n of zeta and uh, g of zeta which is actually infinity uh, can be made less than epsilon for uh, uh, n uh, sufficiently large uh, and uh, uh, for all uh, zeta with mod zeta equal to r ok. But now, uh, but what is g n zeta you see but g n zeta our definition is just f of z0 plus epsilon n zeta this is what it is ok. And as uh, you know uh, 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 and uh, you see even if mod zeta is r ok if your your epsilon n's are becoming smaller. So, you are covering smaller and smaller uh, disc uh, you are covering smaller and smaller circles centered at z0 ok. And therefore, what you are saying is that the function values of f on smaller and smaller circles centered at z0 are getting close to infinity ok. And 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 uh, and that is uh, and that is enough to tell you that f uh, the limit of f as z tends to z0 is actually infinity which means that z0 has to be a pole. But that is a contradiction to our assumption that uh, z0 is actually an isolated essential singularity ok. So, let me write this down this means that uh, the spherical distance between f of z and infinity can be made less than epsilon uniformly uh, on compact subsets. of mod z minus z not lesser than uh, uh, epsilon n uh, for n sufficiently large ok. So, uh, uh, you know because what you must understand is that this uh, this r is uh, this capital R is uh, at our disposal. You can make this capital R as small as you want uh, close to 0, you can make it as large as you want ok. So, you can you can literally cover uh, all the uh, you can cover all the circles centered at z0 of a fixed radius ok below a certain uh, positive value. So, you are so in some in some sense you have therefore, you are able to cover a complete deleted neighborhood of z0 okay that's the whole point all right so uh, well uh, so uh, so this implies uh, is it not is a pole of f which is a contradiction 
because we have assumed z not to be an essential singularity okay so thus you know you f uh, the, the the limit the zoomed limit function g cannot be identically infinity okay therefore what is the other possibility it has to only be an analytic function uh, uh, in the uh, with uh, in the punctured plane uh, punctured the origin okay thus g is analytic in uh, the punctured plane okay and what does that mean it means that uh, it means of course origin is a singularity yeah, I, I origin is an isolated singularity for g okay and now you can ask what kind of singularity it is but you know uh, the point is that again uh, you should not uh, try to study the singularity of g at the origin you should not do that because after all g at the origin is going to reflect f at z not okay so because uh, mind you the gn's are all zoomings of f at z not and their limit is g okay so g is some kind of infinite zooming of f at z not g at the origin is infinite zooming of f at z not okay therefore uh, you should not study g at origin but you must make use of the fact that g is analytic in uh, in the uh, outside the origin so if you again take this mod zeta equal to r if you take a circle centered at the origin in the zeta plane radius r mind you again that is a compact set and uh, g being analytic it is continuous there on a compact set it will be bounded okay now this bound will apply to f in a neighborhood of z naught okay and we will tell you that f uh, is bounded in a neighborhood of z naught but then Riemann's removable singularities will tell you tell you that z naught has to be a removable singularity and again there is a contradiction and that is the and that is the proof of the theorem okay the proof of the theorem becomes so simple okay so so let us go to the other case. Uh, again uh, there exists an m greater than 0 such that again on mod z on mod zeta equal to r greater than 0 there exists an m greater than 0 such that mod g uh, is less than or equal to m okay and uh, but after all uh, since uh, g n converges to g normally uh, in fact uniformly on mod zeta equal to r because again because it is a compact set uh, uh, we have uh, f n uh, f is uh, bounded in a deleted neighborhood of z naught this again implies by the Riemann's removable singularity theorem that you know uh, uh, z naught uh, is a removable singularity of f again a contradiction and and you know that finishes the proof there are only two choices for g and both choices lead to contradictions okay so <coughs> so that's the proof of the famous uh, big picard theorem and we can as a corollary we can deduce the little picard theorem what is the little picard theorem it tells you that the image of the complex plane under an entire function is again the whole plane or the plane minus a point and now what is the proof the proof is very simple take an entire function okay of course you should take a non constant entire function okay because if you take a constant entire function the image of a constant function is always only one point so you must be careful uh, i must have been careful in saying that statement uh, if you take a non constant entire function then you know the image of the complex plane should be either the whole complex plane or complex plane minus a point it can omit only one value at, at most and what is the proof very simple take the take an entire function okay and look at the point at infinity okay the point at infinity becomes a isolated singularity because uh, the complex plane is a deleted neighborhood of infinity in the extended complex plane okay so your function f uh, your entire function f has infinity as an isolated singularity okay now 
for an isolated singularity what are the possibilities it can be removable it can be a pole or it can be essential if it is removable it means that uh, the uh, inf if infinity is a removable singularity it means that f is bounded at infinity and the, that means that by Liouville's theorem f has to be a constant so if i take f to be a non constant entire function okay infinity cannot be a removable singularity all right so it can only be a pole or an essential singularity if infinity is a pole then we have already seen that f has to be a polynomial okay and you know a polynomial will take all values because of the fundamental theorem of algebra so if f is a f has infinity as a pole it is a polynomial the image of the complex plane under f is the whole complex plane you are using the fundamental theorem of algebra so the only thing is uh, infinity is an essential singularity if infinity is an essential singularity for f apply the great picard theorem okay f can uh, uh, f has to uh, any neighborhood of infinity has to be mapped by f into the whole complex plane or the complex plane minus a point but the complex plane itself is all is a deleted neighborhood of infinity so f has to map the whole complex plane onto the whole complex plane or the complex plane minus a point that is it okay so I will just write this down so corollary Picard's little theorem if f is a non constant entire function then uh, uh, f of c is equal to c or c minus z for some z0 in c so proof is uh, infinity is uh, an uh, uh, is, a, is a singular point is an, is an isolated singular point singular point for f in c union infinity as c is a deleted neighborhood of infinity where f is analytic okay thus infinity is either removable pole or essential if infinity is removable f is bounded at infinity so by Liouville f is constant a contradiction because I am assuming, assuming f, is, f is a non constant function on constant in, a non constant entire function if infinity is a pole we have seen earlier that f has to be a polynomial be a non constant polynomial which assumes all complex values by the fundamental theorem of algebra okay so the only other case is when infinity is a pole I mean if infinity is an essential singularity if infinity is an essential singularity apply the big Picard theorem by the big Picard theorem or the great Picard theorem Uh, 
f of c is c or c minus a point. So, that finishes the proof of the little picard theorem and, and therefore, you see uh, uh, you, are, you are able to prove the picard theorems very easily okay. and the key to all this is uh, this, this really great theorem of Montel which says which is a criterion for normality of a family okay. Just, and it is a very very simple criterion uh, in the sense that you know if you know a family uh, functions uh, uh, if it is a family of meromorphic functions if you know that it omits 3 values okay, in the extended plane then you know it is normal. If it is a family of analytic functions and it omits 2 complex values then you know uh, again it is normal okay. and the advantage of normality is that it is a it is a kind of compactness namely it is se normal sequential compactness which allows you to extract from any sequence a subsequence which converges normally that is which converges uniformly on compact subsets okay. So, uh, so that finishes uh, uh, the proof of the Picard theorems which was which were the main aim of this course okay. Uh, what I would uh, like to next do is uh, to tell you that to tell you how uh, uh, how, powerf how powerful Zalkman's lemma is in several other contexts okay. Uh, mind you that uh, uh, this uh, 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 reasonably simplified proof of the great Picard theorem was possible because of the Montel's theorem on uh, on normality okay and uh, that in turn was proved by using Zalkman's lemma okay. So, the, these are all actually uh, all the simplifications are because of Zalk, Zalkman's lemma that is the most important thing okay. So, but the Zalkman's is so similarly uh, in the proofs of various other theorems and various other theories of about complex functions. Zalkman's lemma provides us with uh, easier proofs of some very deep uh, results okay and also provides us with new results and I will try to outline those uh, results in the coming coming lectures okay. So, I will stop here.